When most people think of Super Mario music, they probably think of this. But there's one theme in particular that over the decades has been used, reused, and altered constantly. The original underground theme from Super Mario Brothers by Koji Kondo is only seven bars long and lasts for only about 12 seconds before it loops. But that one theme has gone on to have dozens of reinterpretations in games ranging from Paper Mario to Mario Golf to Smash Brothers and even Dance Dance Revolution. Every single time it's used, it gets changed in some way. And over the years, the composers and arrangers who have adapted this theme have managed to find ways to make variations on pretty much every single part of it. I'm gonna break the theme down into four distinct parts. And in the rest of this video, we'll look at how for almost 40 years, they've managed to keep this seven bar theme going. Before I get into the smaller units, I'll point out a few variations that apply to the whole theme. The very first version of the underground theme is in three, four. It feels almost too quick, and we get this sense of urgency. But I listen to 15 other versions, and every single one changes the meter to 4-4, four four, adding an extra beat. It might be because for many of the variations, the theme became heavily dependent on a groove, or beat. For example, there's a funky groove in Mario Party. Good evening. A drum and bass beat in Super Mario Galaxy. And a trap beat in Paper Mario Color Splash. It seems like they're always trying to incorporate the cool drum beat of the moment into the underground theme. Another thing that's interesting about all of the themes overall is that every single one is in the key of C. With one exception, Mustard Cafe Underground from Color Splash is the only version I heard in D. I wonder if the composers were aware they were breaking with decades of tradition with that key change. Let's move on to the most recognizable part of the theme, the basic idea. In my video on motives, I explained that a strong motive has a distinct interval or interval shape and a distinct rhythm. In this case, the interval pattern is down a minor third, up a half step, and the rhythm is this broken octave pattern followed by rest. Almost every single version does this broken octave thing, but there are a few exceptions. Instead of playing it on the bass line, Delfino's Airstrip from Mario Sunshine plays the basic idea in chords on a high synth. And Mustard Cafe Underground from Color Splash, already the rogue outlier for being in the key of D, is the only version that plays the repeated notes at the unison instead of breaking up the octave. It's also possible to make more subtle changes as well, like how Indigo Underground leads into the motive with a pickup. Or how Mario Galaxy shifts the whole thing up several octaves to a shimmering high register. And of course, there are countless ways to use different instruments and colors to keep the line sounding fresh. Next up is what I'm calling the chord change. This is when the main motive gets moved to a new pitch center. The intervals and shapes stay exactly the same, but instead of starting on C, it starts on F. We almost always go down a fifth, or up a fourth from C to F, and it feels just like a 12 bar blues when we go from the one chord to the four chord. Yeah, nobody loves me but my mother. Somewhere around 2008's Super Smash Brothers Brawl, there's a subtle shift in the form, and this C to F section actually repeats. This change ends up being reused in a lot of future games, which has the obvious benefit of the material taking up more time, before it needs to repeat again. Because the most interesting part of this section is the fact that we've moved to a new chord, the more interesting variations are the ones that explore new harmonies. In Mario Golf, for the Game Boy Color, we get these super upbeat but bluesy F and E flat major chords in the space after the bass line. And 
And once again, Mustard Cafe Underground stands out as an especially interesting one because it changes the chord completely, but the distinct rhythm keeps us in sync with the original idea. Next we have what I'm referring to as the lick. No, not that lick. It's this wild chromatic line, and the tonality and harmony are so ambiguous, there's even an entire section in a thesis by a student at McGill University's music research department that talks about how weird it is. The lick seems to be the place where people take the most liberty to do their own thing. In Delfino Airstrip, the rhythm gets adapted to a bossa nova feel. Dupe Dunes from Mario and Luigi does a different lick that is vaguely similar, but then it kind of runs off into its own thing. Beat Block Galaxy is another that does a similar lick, but still something brand new. The last part of the theme is the full measure rest at the end, or what I'm calling the gap. First of all, what a brilliant way to have a smooth loop. You just pause for a second and then start back over. It also helps clear the space because by the end of the lick, we've just heard an A-flat minor chord this doesn't really make any sense with the C Dorian that we started with. So taking a moment of silence creates enough of a gap to wipe the harmonic slate clean and let us start over, basically wherever we want to. So any variation on silence is basically not silence. One obvious approach is to just play through the gap like the beat block galaxy we just heard that drives forward from the lick straight into the return of the basic idea. Sometimes the composer takes advantage of the gap to do something different, like how in Paper Mario Sticker Star we get this spicy G flat 9 chord. As all of these different variations show, it's not what ideas you use, but how you use them that matters. This theme has been going strong for almost 40 years because composers keep finding new ways to keep it fresh while still being respectful to the original source material. To understand what that means from another angle, you have to watch this video here where I took a bunch of Mario themes and rewrote them as if they came from different film and video game universes, including this very underground theme in the style of Celeste. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.